lives up Winnipeg, Manitoba. Guys and girls, we are exploring the middle of Canada, Manitoba, Prairie Province this week. So right now we are at our first location. It is the number one tourist destination of Manitoba and that is the Forks. So because the Forks is literally an intersection of two rivers, Cinnaboyne and the Red River, Winnipeg is actually on a floodplain and they've had some crazy floods over the years. So these tiles here, so this is the high water mark of the 1950s flood. And this one, way up here, is the 1852 flood, which is in mass. So there's a lot of different activities around this area and we're gonna be doing several of them, but we're heading to our first one, which is the Forks Markets. Now the building of the Forks Market is in actually used to be a derelict, run down horse stable. So they were old horse stables and if you look now in the archways, you see behind me, there are all the various shops. So it's been revamped up and now it's like full, full of vendors, different foods, which we are gonna go try. This is the hardest part, trying to figure out what I wanna eat. All different. So I got two different flights, all different beers. You actually look, they're in the shape of Manitoba. You guys didn't know that. So what did you get? It is a veggie roti. So it's like vegetables, curry, aloo, um, potatoes, all wrapped in a roti wheat. Show. Cheers to some Winnipeg craft beer. Superbird pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's like fruity and sour. Barrels aged red ale. It's a barrel, a sweet and sour barrels aged red ale. It's definitely sweet and sour. So what'd you get? <laughs> it is a vegan twist soft serve. So chocolate and vanilla with toasted coconut on top. That's so good. Mm -hmm. It's like so good. It's melting everywhere. But... Of course. Oh, but what do you have? I got the so much s'more. <laughs> it's a waffle cone filled with chocolate and marshmallow. And then vanilla ice cream on top of that, drizzled in chocolate sauce and then rolled in graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate chips. And now. Oh man, we we're back. gonna need many napkins. The disaster is melting everywhere. <laughs> I can't eat it fast enough. Oh my God. The wind is blowing out. <laughs> have a couple hours of relaxation in various different rooms and pools. So the idea is to go into the hot tub, we're gonna spend a few minutes in there, and then we're gonna take a polar plunge into a cold pool. So we're gonna go hot pool, then cold pool, and we're gonna do it three different times because it's meant to revitalize and increase your circulation and kind of make you feel like rejuvenated. There's so many saunas though. You're not supposed to be talking in your name. Oh yeah. Go 
How's your cold plunge? Cold plunge to come along. The more I do it, the more refreshing it feels. find something at the Winnipeg Farmer's Market because it's right downtown and there's a bunch of different local vendors and artisans and food to taste and try. So that's what we're going to do. Isn't that good? That's so good. And we like it. And then this is one of the places that we acknowledge Ancestral Place because the forks of these two rivers has been a very significant meeting place for Indigenous people for thousands of years. Um, there is evidence from archaeological digs, including one we did before um, starting to build, uh, that Indigenous peoples came from all over the place, from the forests to the east, from what's now the U.S., from to the west, and get, would gather here. The architecture you see, it sits on these four, we call them roots, like tree roots. As sort of, the architect looked at the way trees root themselves to the riverbanks, and he's also thinking of the building being rooted in Mother Earth, just as all human beings are connected to the earth, and all equal and equally deserving of human rights for no other reason. Our first gallery is what are I human rights so what are we even talking right, about so the stories and and, and elements I mean, in this gallery will help us sort of think about what we mean when we're talking about human rights do different people have different ideas when they talk about human rights how did the thinking about human rights evolve over time and what people and what things contributed to the way we think about it we each get our own bubble of light which is very beautiful, but if we come together, our bubbles will merge and the ribbons start running through and connecting us all together. So the mandate of the museum is to explore the subject of human rights with a special, but not exclusive, reference to Canada, to promote respect for others and to encourage reflection and dialogue. Another architectural fact is that the designers wanted to tell the story of human rights through light and darkness. So the building itself actually weaves through light and through dark, um, and then it eventually ends up light. So you start with dark and you go to light. So we've made it to the very top of the museum and it is an amazing 360 degree lookout of all the city of Winnipeg, literally because it's prairie land, there's no mountains, you can see everything. So here we have the zoo map. There is a lot of different things to do here, but we are going to do the journey to Churchill, which is all the Arctic animals. We want to see some polar bears. Yeah, we want to see polar bears. because it's pretty hot outside and I think they're gonna want to go for a little bit of a swim. So all the polar bears that we saw were actually orphaned polar bears. So they were found up in Churchill, which is the most southern part in the world that you can find polar bears, that polar bears live. And they were all abandoned by their mothers. And so instead of putting them down, they are brought here. This afternoon we are exploring the Exchange District, which is a National Historic Site of over 180 heritage buildings and which was actually named after the Greenery Exchange, which was a huge industry in the 1930s and kind of put Winnipeg on the map. And we're kind of here the best time because it is First Fridays, which happens the first Friday of every month and it's where a lot of the local shops bring in 
local artisans and crafts and the galleries opened up their doors to kind of host people and you can shop around and see some really cool local crafts. I'm Leonard Taylor. I'm a fashion designer and artist here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I've got my retail store here where I do all of my work and uh, then I just try and make people smile and feel good. That's my goal in life and that's why I'm here. That's what I'm going to do to the day I die. So the Lysol processing system, basically what it does is it uses a non-toxic solvent and then all of the different um, byproducts and waste products actually get recycled back in. Found a new pair of leggings. These are amazing. They're so comfortable. So yeah, they're, I think rose is one of the most popular because you can really smell it yeah. right out of the jar. But a lot of the other herbals, you notice them more when they hit the hot water of the bathtub because then it's like your tea, your bath, I mean, turns into like a bit of a tea. So all the fragrance starts blooming at that point. all around the park here, including ones in the forest like the one behind me. And a bunch of different international acts from around the world have come to perform. I mean, 70 acts in total are scattered around the festival. In a world full of sorrow, what for? You watch the world from the place beneath the willow. There's lots of local vendors and artisans to go shopping. So many years, too many tears on your pillow, on your pillow. So don't you wait, don't you wait until the morning light, the morning light. Far away, far away until you Should we pick up a new vlogging cam? Oh. Yeah. New camera for Instagram? I think so. are compostable. They're biodegradable and so is the cups for all the drinks that you get. Don't forget, you gotta let know what you